can this video card turn that old, slow, dusty, seven and a half year old computer in your closet into a high performance Plex server? Would it run well in a PC if it only had a 240 watt power supply? How much money can you save by using a low powered desktop and a low power GPU as your Plex server? Today, I'm going to throw this P2000 in an old computer with an i5-2400 CPU that I have lying around. This desktop has a tiny 240 watt power supply and only four gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Keep in mind, this CPU is seven and a half years old. You can find a very similar computer to the one I'll be using for testing today on eBay for anywhere from 50 to 90 bucks. That said, I am not specifically recommending this as a solution to a Plex server. There are much better deals out there on desktops with much newer CPUs. We will be covering right sizing your Plex server in a future video. But for today's sake, let's see how well the P2000 can perform on a seven and a half year old desktop. In the first test, I transcoded H.264 1080p with AAC audio down to 720p at two megabits per second. Because the CPU did not have to transcode the audio, you can really see the performance of the P2000 shine here. I got eight transcodes with hardware transcoding off, and I hit 20 transcodes with hardware transcoding on. As you can see, there was still some room to grow here. It was at this point that I realized the four gigabytes of RAM was really holding this computer back as each transcode required about 200 megabytes of memory. The rest of the results that I'll be going over today were done with eight gigabytes of memory, but for comparison's sake, I'll cover the before and after so you can see there is a lower threshold for RAM on a Plex server. At around four gigabytes, that threshold seems to be around 15 transcodes. The next test I ran was converting H.265 1080p AC3 files down to H.264 1080p AAC. The quality was set on maximum, and depending on the bitrate, I was able to achieve one or two transcodes with hardware transcoding off. The i5 was just barely up for the task of transcoding both H.265 and AC3 audio at the same time. With hardware transcoding on and the P2000 helping, I was able to get around 19 transcodes to play simultaneously. Here's where you can start to see the CPU holding the P2000 back from its full potential. It might have gotten another couple of transcodes in had the CPU been able to handle the audio transcoding. And here you can see the additional four gigabytes of memory seem to add about 10 transcodes in total. So what if the CPU doesn't have to transcode the audio? Well, next I transcoded H.265 1080p with AAC audio to H.264 1080p. I was able to get three transcodes running with hardware transcoding off and 21 transcodes to play with hardware transcoding on. Once again, you can see the CPU is holding the P2000 back as the GPU is unable to reach 100% utilization. And here you can see we gained an additional five transcodes by adding the four gigabytes of RAM. Next, we transcoded H.264 4K with AAC audio down to H.264 720p at four megabits per second. I achieved three transcodes with hardware transcoding off and eight transcodes with hardware transcoding on. As you can see, the GPU is only at 76% utilization in the pictures. It could have kept going if the CPU was just a bit more powerful. As you've seen from the test, the P2000 performed incredibly well, even in a seven and a half year old computer. I think the CPU held it back from reaching its full potential, but depending on your transcoding needs, this could be more than enough for you. As you can see, the i5-2400 with a P2000 actually outperformed dual X5670s across the board, doubling and in some cases quadrupling the performance of dual X5670s. While you can save a lot in initial purchasing costs by running this P2000 in a seven to eight year old $75 computer, there are also major savings in electricity costs by using it in a machine that doesn't have power hungry CPUs. In the test cases we've gone over today, the total power consumption never rose above 137 watts. That is one third to one fourth what you would see in most dual Xeon servers under the same load. The following graphs were made while running two H.265 transcodes and four H.265 transcodes. As you can see, the P2000 in the i5-2400 desktop consumed one quarter of the power compared to the dual Xeon server under the same load. Its power consumption at idle is only 36 watts versus the 226 watts from the Xeon server. 
at idle, the i5-2400 desktop costs 10 cents per day to power, and it'll actually cost you 65 cents per day to power the x5670 Xeon server. Which brings me to my next point. Running two servers at home costs me around $44 a month. If I were to migrate my transcoding server to a less powerful desktop, like this i5-2400 with a P2000, or if I consolidated my two servers into one and put this P2000 in my storage server, it would save me at least $200 a year in electricity costs, all while increasing my overall performance. It seems the P2000 GPU can reasonably turn almost any computer into a powerful Plex server. And thanks to its 75 watt TDP, it does this while sipping on only tiny amounts of electricity. It seems the only thing you need to be mindful of is whether or not your CPU can keep up. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We're a small channel trying to grow to bring you more content like this. You can also find us on Facebook or on our website. And if you check the description below this video, you'll actually find recommendations on computers that you could use as a Plex server with this P2000. Oh, and one more thing before you go. We're gonna be doing a giveaway for an eight terabyte Western Digital Drive. Please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the instructions for the giveaway.